Hi, I'm going to explain the science fiction thriller movie 222. Beware of spoilers. Take care and be cautious. A man with a gun enters Grand Central Station in New York as the movie opens. When those nearby see the gun, they begin to flee. He advances toward another man who appears to be guarding a young woman. When the security stops them, both males start pointing firearms at one another. The time is precisely 2.22 when the camera pans to a clock. After that, we hear gunfire. It turned out to be a dream. After waking up from his dream, Dylan resumes his daily activities while listening to the news. The news reports on a star called Hamlin that went supernova 30 years ago and whose light is now reaching Earth. This supernova will have an impact on the Earth and its inhabitants. The next scene depicts Dylan riding a bike to Grand Central Station to catch a train on his way to work. He is a skilled pattern visualizer who works as an air traffic controller. He goes to a club after work, partying with his co-workers, and gets a gift of a ticket to an aerial ballet for his forthcoming birthday. The next day at work, he begins to notice constellation patterns in the sky. He begins to get hallucinations regarding his frequent dream and is unable to speak with aircraft. He checks the time and sees that it is exactly 2.22. He notices that the clock has stopped after giving it a close look. Dylan only regains his composure when one of his co-workers calls. Due to his pause, Dylan realizes that the planes are poised to collide. He informs the pilots right away, narrowly preventing a crash. There is relief among the onboard passengers. Dylan observes that the clock has resumed operation. He is suspended for four weeks as a result of this occurrence. He goes to the aerial ballet the day after his suspension and meets Sarah there. He is astounded by her beauty. Everyone is at the afterparty when the ballet is over. Sarah is approached by Dylan, who introduces himself. They enter a restaurant and begin conversing. Dylan reveals to Sarah that his father was a pilot and that he also pursued a career in aviation but was unable to do so due to his fear of flying. He learns from Sarah that she is employed by the Howard Pace Art Gallery. Sarah was a passenger on the plane that nearly collided with the other aircraft at 2.22 p.m., which he also shares with her along with the news that he has been suspended from work. Sarah was grateful to Dylan for saving her life while Dylan felt sorry for the occurrence. As they part, they confess to one another that despite it being their first date, they felt a strong connection and as though they had known each other for a very long time. On his walk to the Grand Central the next day, Dylan witnesses the same things that happened the day before, a siren, a woman laughing, construction noises, a man asking, may I help you, and glass breaking. A businessman reading his newspaper, a couple holding hands, a line of preschoolers where the final child in line loses something, and a pregnant woman hiding beneath the clock are all things he observes as he enters Grand Central Station at 2.21 p.m. The station's window breaks at precisely 2.22 p.m. He then approaches Sarah and proposes a date for an early dinner. He takes her for ice cream in Central Park. Sarah says that an injury caused her to stop dancing. Dylan is depressed, so he plays a music and starts dancing in front of her to make her feel better. The two joyfully dance together in the middle of a crowded park after she joins him. Finally, they share a kiss. They make love in Dylan's apartment. They hug while lying in bed the following morning. When Dylan asks Sarah where she obtained the jewelry, she responds that it was her ex-boyfriend Jonas, who also happens to be the gallery's lead artist. When Dylan inquires about Sarah's birthday, they learn that they both were born on the same day, April 18, 1986, and that they will both turn 30 in a week. At precisely 9.15 a.m., Dylan hears a car accident on the street below his flat. Dylan tells Sarah that this is the third day in a row that the same thing has occurred. After that, Dylan rides in a taxi to Grand Central. Dylan instructs the driver to stop the cab while he takes the shorter way and hears the same pattern of siren, woman laughing, construction noises, and a man asking, may I assist you, once more. Dylan then yells at the cab driver to stop, which enrages him and causes him to turn back and reprimand Dylan for yelling at him. The glass windows of the cab break at that precise moment when another car strikes them both. 
Despite being hurt, Dylan visits Grand Central Station and observes the same sequence of events. A businessman holds a newspaper while standing, an elderly couple embraces, a line of children forms after the last child drops something, and finally, a pregnant woman stands beneath the clock. He describes to Sarah these recurring patterns in which distinct individuals carry out the same behaviors. Despite not believing Dylan, Sarah assists him in treating his injuries from the collision. When Dylan gets home, he begins to write down everything that happened since 9.10 a.m. A beetle dying, a jet flying overhead, and a drop of water are the first three things he writes about. Dylan checks the top of his apartment building the next day to see if the pattern has continued. Like yesterday, he watches for a drop of water, but the sky is clear. But once more at precisely 9.10, a drop hits his notebook. He closes the notebook in surprise and finds a crushed bug on the page when he opens it. A plane then flies over him. Dylan nearly can't believe the trend has continued. When Dylan visits the gallery in search of Sarah, he discovers that it is hosting an exhibition with Jonah's artwork serving as the centerpiece. Dylan notices that a light hologram show about the Grand Central Station, which was built by Sarah's ex-boyfriend Jonah's, is eerily similar to the experiences he has had recently. Under the clocks, there was a businessman reading his newspaper, a couple cuddling, a line of young children, and a pregnant mother. Given that only Dylan is aware of these happenings, Dylan believes Jonas is stalking him. He queries Jonas about whether he was pursuing him and then strikes Jonas, starting a fight. The proprietor of the Kaifa Gallery, who is present, applauds and remarks that it was a fantastic idea to recreate the murder that took place at Grand Central Station 30 years ago. In addition to putting her relationship with Dylan on hold, Sarah offers Jonas an apology for Dylan's assault. Later on that day, Dylan sends Sarah a text message pleading for her pardon. Meanwhile, he discovers a stack of envelopes stashed away in his house. He discovers that these letters were sent to Evelyn by a man by the name of Jake Redman. After some research, Dylan learns that Jake Redmond resided in his flat 30 years prior, in 1987. Additionally, he discovers information on the murder that occurred at Grand Central 30 years ago in an internet article. The perpetrator was Jake Redmond, who murdered his lover Evelyn as well as a police officer in the midst of Grand Central Station. Even then, Evelyn was expecting a child. The murder happened at precisely 2.22. Because Evelyn was in love with police officer Noah Marks, whom Jake also killed that day, Jake killed her out of jealousy. Additionally, he discovers that Jake, Evelyn, Sarah, and he all have the same birthday. He and Sarah were actually born the day after Jake and Evelyn passed away. Dylan makes the connection that he and Sarah are Jake and Evelyn in a previous existence. Then he visits Evelyn's house after finding her address in the letters. When Dylan meets Evelyn's sister, she learns how much Evelyn loved Jake, leading her to doubt the idea that Jake killed Evelyn because she had feelings for someone else. She also lets him know that Noah, the policeman, had feelings for Evelyn as well. When Dylan returns home, he draws a connection between their predicament and the constellation that is now occurring after 30 years. He realizes that the constellation's three stars are actually Jake, Evelyn, and Noah. Currently, Dylan, Sarah, and Jonas are present. Their fate has also returned since the constellation has. He asks Sarah to meet him and texts her about what he has been viewing. In the gallery, Sarah is taking in Jonas's holograms. She informs Jonas of Dylan's discoveries, but he rejects them as Dylan's hallucinations. Later on that day, Sarah pays Dylan a visit when he is at home. She tries to comfort him after noticing his sadness. Since their birthday is the next day, Dylan explains to her that there is a possibility that he would murder her, just like Jake did with Evelyn. He therefore orders her to go and never see him again for their mutual benefit. Dylan loses control as Sarah leaves and starts damaging objects around his flat. Then, as he approaches the terrace with the purpose to jump off the structure, he changes his mind. In contrast, Sarah visits Jonah's office and tells him everything that occurred. To help her forget about Dylan, Jonah offers to take her on a trip. The next morning, Dylan understands that everything in the pattern, including the water drop, the bug, the plane, and the plane, happened to Jake on the day he passed away. 
the recurring pattern has been attempting to alert Dylan about Sarah's peril. Dylan realizes this and rushes to save her. On the way, he phones her several times, but she never answers. So he makes his way to Jonah's office. He is astonished to find a wall covered in photographs of Sarah and numerous holograms of her there. He understands Jonah's obsession with Sarah. He also discovers a gun case that is empty, and he is now certain that Sarah is in danger. To find her, he dashes to the train station. While all is going on, Sarah and Jonas are purchasing their train tickets at Grand Central. Sarah is instructed by Jonas to wait for him outside the timer. History is being repeated. The tickets are brought back to her by Jonas. They are living out their past, he also understands. Sarah informs him that she is in love with Dylan and cannot accompany him. He becomes agitated and begs Sarah to confess her love to him, but she declines just as Dylan arrives at the station. As Jonas approaches Dylan with a gun, he becomes outraged and believes Sarah summoned him there. The same characters that Dylan had described start to appear to Sarah. The businessman, the hugging couple, the kids, and so forth. She starts to understand that Dylan was accurate in what he said. However, it also implies that Sarah herself is the expectant woman under the clock. By pointing his gun first at Dylan and then at Sarah, Jonas implies that if he cannot have Sarah, neither can Dylan. Dylan saves Sarah just in time, but at 2.21 pm, he is shot. As the events from 30 years ago unfold, Jonas is shot by the police who have followed Dylan there at precisely 2.22 pm. Dylan collapses into Sarah's arms, briefly closing his eyes. He sees Jake and Evelyn kissing and cuddling. Thankfully, he survives. When Sarah looks at the time, it is 2.23 pm, they make it out alive, and their fate has been altered. We finally learn that Noah, a police officer, had also slain Evelyn and Jake in a previous existence, but that the police had changed the facts to protect their image. The movie's opening mention of Hamlin, a dying star, ultimately vanishes, but a new star is born right away. In the closing scene, it is revealed that Dylan and Sarah are a happy couple, with Dylan now a pilot after finally overcoming his fear of flying, and Sarah beaming tenderly at their infant in the cradle. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.